290 in a descent flight level 260, multi 18. Uh, we will set up an, uh, an orbit for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, in the TSA 29, and after that we would like to continue our flight plan uh, to, uh, to our destination. We are in a left-hand turn, uh, then 070. When nose is cold, switch to safe, you're clear to join echelon left. Let's go switch to safe, going to echelon left. During the last years, the Romanian uh, commitment to, to NATO was increasing a lot, and uh, part of this is uh, our contribution to Baltic air policing mission. It's the second time we are here. First time it was back in 2007 with uh, MiG-21s, and uh, now 
uh, with F-16s. It's uh, really important for, uh, for Romania to be here to demonstrate our commitment, uh, our increased commitment to NATO and the contribution of Romania to safeguarding the NATO airspace. Uh, we are really happy to work uh, here together with uh, our Portuguese partners and our Finnish partners, uh, especially given the, the, the context of uh, NATO summit, which uh, is going to be held in just one week here in uh, Lithuania. We are here on the uh, doing a contribution for the uh, policing of the Baltic countries' airspace. So we are here since the 1st of April and uh, we'll uh, stay here till the end of July. And we have four jets ready to scramble as you witness and to perform any uh, mission required here in the Baltics. Well, it's important, first of all, because uh, we can uh, give our contributes with uh, what we know to do best, which is this type of mission, the QRA, quick reaction alert. At the same time, it's a great opportunity to train with the uh, different partners uh, from the different nations that are in the uh, Baltic region and not only the uh, air forces but as well some uh, ground troops um, so it's uh, it, the best the best opportunity that we have to uh, practice uh, together as a, a united force so we, we often get the question why does NATO have to coordinate all these airplace activities because I mean most countries in Europe um, they do have their own air force and they do have the capabilities to intercept uh, unauthorized aircraft on their own. Uh, but as you know, most countries in Europe are rather small. And so um, this issue would have a traffic flying through European airspace. Um, quite often it would only, only take like 10 minutes before it reaches the next country. And in general, it will never take more than 30 to 45 minutes. So it would not be wise or uh, it would be suboptimal, let's put it this way. To have the nations do that all separately over their territory. Uh, so that's where NATO steps in. We try to coordinate that air policing effort to make it more, both more efficient and more effective. Um, because under NATO control, NATO fighters are allowed to cross into the into the neighboring countries. So, so we can actually um, continue the intercept throughout several NATO countries. The, the air policing mission over the Baltic Sea region is essentially still what it was uh, years ago, because it is a peacetime air police mission, and that mission as such has not changed over time. Uh, but the Baltic Sea region is, is special uh, for two reasons. First of all, because that's where we tend to see most of the Russian interactions, or interactions with the Russians, because the Russians have to basically fly from their enclave, clearly get back to the Russian mainland along the coast of the three Baltic states. So of course, obviously, that's where we then get to intercept them. And so that's where we see most of our day-to-day -day interaction with, with Russian uh, assets. But the second reason is that the uh, three Baltic states, although they have their own air force, they, they like fighter jets, so they don't have the, the means to actually intercept um, unauthorized uh, aircraft, and that's where NATO steps in. So we provide that framework for them by inviting other nations to deploy forces on a temporary basis uh, to one of the Baltic states. Well, Finland is, well, Finland is now part of NATO, uh, but they still need to fully integrate into the NATO air policing uh, business, and that's partly technical, uh, it's partly procedural, but I mean, we'll get there, and it's just a matter of time, it's going to go relatively fast. Uh, Sweden will be the, the same case once they actually become a uh, NATO member. Well, for NATO, I mean, Finland, of course, brings a lot of uh, air capabilities uh, to the table, so they have a pretty robust air force with lots of, uh, also with, with they have already warning aircraft, uh, intelligence collection aircraft, so it's not only uh, limited to fighters. Uh, they bring a lot of uh, intel collection capabilities uh, as well. So yeah, they, they uh, of course, they they know their neighbor, uh, the big neighbor to the east, uh, rather well. So, I mean, NATO is gaining a lot from, from that expertise, of course.